I love for y'all for yin. It's Moa Oludamari. Thank you for watching for this brief moment of time that we have with you. Let's jump right into it. First of all, me and the Moa Temple, we are advocates of our ancestors that was here in America, brought over here in America. See, we see the value and the intelligence and the, and the wisdom of our ancestors here in America. We don't dismiss them like many of our brothers and sisters do. It's important for us to do that because, again, I, I've, I've went through this plenty of times before. For us as Africans in America, for us to even have the connection with our, our African ancestry beyond America, we must first come to grips and understand and realize the intelligence and the beauty of mind and spirit of our ancestors here. Now, that's becoming to be a hard thing to do because when, when you speak of our ancestors here, it becomes synonymous with slaves. Oh, they were slaves. This is coming from our own people. Slaves. The irony of it all is that slaves is the language that the Europeans used to describe our people. Isn't that ironic? We call our ancestors slaves, but we're using the Europeans' descriptor of our people to define our own people. No, 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 no. Our people are not slaves. There are Africans that experience enslavement. These were breathing, thinking, feeling human beings. These are our great, great, great grandmothers and grandfathers. The reason that we're living and breathing here today is due to the strength of those people that was able to make it all the way through the Middle Passage to make it here. The same strength and intelligence that was over there in Africa is the same strength and intelligence that's already over here. Let's go deeper. Let's talk about Christianity. Because that's always a big topic within the conscious communities. Let's talk about Christianity and let's really bring it to a historical perspective of Christianity and the intelligence of our people. Had a conversation with a few brothers yesterday. And, you know, they were saying that um, when our people, you know, celebrate Christian holidays and Islamic holidays, they're just reminded on how the Crusaders and the Jihadists uh, work so hard to keep our people spiritually enslaved. Well, that is to assume then that those that are not Christians or Muslims were those who were spiritually free. But if we're talking history, right? Who were the people in many ways? Of course, you know, some of it was due to conquest and so on and so forth. But in many ways, our African ancestors sold our own African brothers and sisters into slavery. Wouldn't that mean that those who were spiritually free were the ones who sold us into captivity in the first place? Why would those who were spiritually free? Sell their own brothers and sisters into slavery. If we're going to use that argument. Why would any of our brothers and sisters over here. Take back on the culture that sold them into this mire of ignorance and confusion. What's worse? Who's worse? The colonizer or the person who sold us to the colonizer? If we're being honest and if we're being historically correct and having historical integrity in what it is that we're talking about. I love my brothers and sisters from the motherland. And I'm appreciative that many of our brothers and sisters from the motherland are apologizing due to what their ancestors did to our ancestors. Same. 
But outside of apologies, nothing else is going on. There's no aid that's really being brought to our people. So what are we left with? We're left with the Bible. We're left with the Quran. And we are left with our innate spiritual intelligence that was never severed, only covered through the disconnection. Of our cultural heritage. The tongue that we use to describe ourselves and our spirituality. The tongue was taken, not the innate intelligence. Understand this. The intent behind our hallelujahs. The intent that we have when we pray is good Lord Jesus. The intent that we have when we praise Allah is the same intention that we had when we was partaking in our cultural African spiritual systems. Because we always innately know is that our spiritual connection with the divine is what gives us power to move forward. We've always known this. But if you take the language away from me of saying Olo Dumari and the only thing that I have right now in front of me speaking of a divine patronage is Jesus or God, Jehovah or Allah, I'm going to use my innate spiritual intelligence and use what I have in front of me to make that connection that I know is already true. Let's go even deeper. Let's go even deeper. The European did not create Christianity. We can stop right there. The European did not create Christianity. We must not confuse what the European has done to use and manipulate and pervert the spiritual Hebrew text. We can't confuse what they have used it for with the innate truth that is within it. These are all of our people anyway. Look up in the Bible. It's a, they talk about Ethiopia all the time. They talk about Egypt all the time. Christ ran into Egypt from Israel. Why? Because there's a landmass that actually connects the two. What, what, what? What is now called is the, the whole uh, 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 the the the, the um, Palest uh, Palestine Peninsula. Look at your maps. There is a connection of that peninsula with uh, uh, with around the Egypt area. It's all a part of the African continent, y'all. Come on. It's all a part of the African continent. What does that mean? That means that we're all brothers. We're all brothers from different spiritual tribes. It's all good. But when that white man comes in, puts the word John instead of Yah Cannon, put Jesus instead of Yahshua, put all these Greek words on top of the Hebraic language that we spoke. Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, Yahweh. We then all of a sudden forget that the Bible is an African document. And that Ishmael and Isaac had the same ancestry through Abraham or Ibrahim. All people of color. They might not have been dark, dark, dark like myself. They might have had a little lighter complexion. But these are all our people. We forget that the Bible wasn't originally written in English. 
It's a translation. We also tend to forget. Let's talk about our ancestors over here in America again. We tend to forget. We talk about the preachers and so on and so forth. But we tend to forget that many of our preachers were illiterate. Could not read or write. But what the slave master did, that they will raise one up to be a preacher and give them prescribed uh, uh, scriptures to preach to their people. Obey your earthly master as you would obey Christ and so on and so forth and things like that. But once our people became literate, once our people became literate, that's when the likes of Nat Turner comes around. He read those stories in the Bible and said, wait a minute, my people deserve to be free. So when he was able to read for himself, able to critically think for himself, now he moves in a whole different way. He's not taking only what is uh, prescribed to him by the slave masters. He's like, no, 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 we must go deeper. I must let my brothers and sisters know that there's more to this Bible than just obey your earthly masters. Turn the other cheek. Love them that despitefully use you. But there's also a scripture that says there's a time for peace and a time for war. There was also a scripture when Christ said, I ain't coming to bring peace. I'm coming to bring that sword. See, now this is another reason why literacy is important. Because without literacy, you don't have the ability to critically think for yourself. And that's the issue that we're going with. Let's go a little bit more in history here. This book right here is called Cut Loose Your Stammering Tongue, Black Theology and the Slave Narrative. It's written, uh, this is the second edition, second edition, uh, Dwight N. Hopkins and George C.L. Cummings. Great book, definitely um, recommended. But to go into it, let's look at the intelligence that our ancestors had. And to prove that they had a spiritual insight already innate within them in the midst of the hell that they was going through. Check this out. This is on page six, by the way. Let's see. Hold on. Let's let's let's, uh, let's go to page five real quick. Under Bush Arbor Theology. And slave Africans took the remnants of their traditional religious structures and meshed them together with their interpretation of the Bible. All of this occurred in the invisible institution, far away from the watchful eyes of white people. Brothers and sisters, our ancestors had an invisible institution. They understood what the white people and the slave masters and this, that, and this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Most of them knew that what they were saying was nonsense. See, but if you continue to think of our own ancestors as slaves, as ignorant, as whatever the case may be, you won't even see your ancestors as thinking individuals. Let's, let's, let's go even deeper. Ex-slave. Becky, Becky Isley described the hidden nature of the invisible institution pre-Civil War. Quote, for the war, before the war, you know what I'm saying, you know how we talk, for the war, when we would have a meeting that night, we must always in the woods or in the bushes or somewhere where white folks couldn't hear. Let's go deeper. Some ingenuously set up worship spots in the field. Here's another quote. They have big holes in the field that they get down and pray. Some develop regular praying grounds. Another quote. Us niggas used to have praying grounds down in the hollow. Let's go even more. Let's see, who was this? Yeah. Susan Rhodes, another 
ancestor of ours. We used to steal off in the woods and have church like the spirit moved us. We would sing and pray to our own liking and soul satisfaction. R Rose resumes. And we would sure have good meetings, honey. Like God said. Let's go even deeper. Check out what they said here. <clears throat> White folks not only pass laws to prevent African-American bondsmen and bondswomen from receiving unsupervised religious instructions, but they also sought to whip and kill slaves who met secretly to praise God. Now tell me, why would they whip and kill those who would secretly praise God because those African ancestors understood that there was a difference? Don't act like we don't cold switch today. Don't act like we don't put on a different voice when the white man's in front of us right here, but when we with our brothers over here, we ain't talking that what's good, bro. She got down, you know what I'm saying? She chilling. The same thing happened with our ancestors here. But if you don't see the humanity, if you don't see the humanity in our ancestors, if you don't see the uh, humanity in our ancestors, not understanding that our ancestors had, again, intelligence and insight and a spiritual connection innate within them due to our African heritage, you won't see this. All you will see is a whole bunch of black niggas being brainwashed by the white man and his white man religion, but that white man has never created a religion. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So they will take our knowledge. They will take our Hebrew scriptures and twist them and turn them and pervert them and, and, and just take away all the power from it. And then that's when we get something called the King James Version. Well, if it's King James version of the Bible, what does that mean? That it's not really the real Bible. I might be deviating a little bit, but I just have to let this be known, man. I have to let this be known. I represent my ancestors that was born and raised right here on this soil first. That's who I represent first. And through them, I have the connections with my ancestors beyond. But we want to skip and dismiss and disrespect our ancestors here while upholding another ancestor from way back when, when if we're talking historically correct, that might have been the one who sold us in here in the first place, but that's neither here nor there. Look. This is what our ancestors will also do. Just to show you the intelligence of our ancestors. When they had their secret meetings called the in invisible institution. When they have their private prayer meetings, this is on page seven. And it says, because they had to keep it on hush, you know what I'm saying? They couldn't let these white people know that we worship in God the way that we know how to worship God. They said, so to keep the sound from going out, slaves will put a great big iron pot by the door. This is our ancestor, Katie Blackwest Johnson. She concurs. She says, I would see them turn down the pots to keep the folks at the big house from hearing them singing and, uh, and praying. Look at the intelligence of our ancestors. They would fill that like a big tub up with water so that our sounds of us praising and getting down and dancing and moving and grooving the same way that our ancestors did in the motherland. Look, look at, look at when our people catch the Holy Ghost now and compare it to our ancestors dancing in Africa. It's the same. But they will pour water into this pot. So when we get down with the get down, they understood sound so well that they knew that that sound would get trapped 
in that tub of water so that white man couldn't hear them. Furthermore, what they would do is that they will set up traps. So when that patty roller comes to disrupt their service, their praise, their worship of the almighty, those patty rollers will get trapped. Or at least trapped enough that they can warn their brothers and sisters and be like, yo, they coming. Them old patty rollers done, uh, this is, this is, this is, them old patty rollers done red plumb into a great line of grapevines that the slave has stretched across the path. And those vines tripped up the horses and throw the old patty rollers off into the bushes. This is the intelligence of our ancestors right here. Our intelligence didn't go away. Our intelligence wasn't lost. Yeah, we might have different tongues now, but we've always had different tongues. People want to speak about we have to do the ways of our ancestors. Okay, what ancestors are we talking about? Because not all of our people were Yoruba. Not all of our people, what, what, what about the Congo? What about all the other different tribes of West Africa and so on and so forth that was transplanted and transported from the motherland over here? Which ancestors are you talking about? All the ancestors who, 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 who was transported from Africa all the way over here who practiced Islam? Are those no longer our ancestors? The Moors? Are they not our ancestors because they practiced Islam? Come on, man. We must think critically as well when we speak about our ancestors. And we must make sure that we are doing our due diligence. And we must also be sure that we're studying the spiritual paths of our ancestors throughout them all. Because in my studies, in my cross studies of the different spiritual systems uh, that our ancestors partook in, they all boil down to having upright character. The coolness of head. Be cool. Don't get hot-headed. Weighing your heart against a feather. Or carrying the crimson feather on your head. Don't carry on the burden. It all boiled down to how we treated each other. How we saw one another. How we relate to one another. And if we was judged by any of these spiritual systems today based upon how we're speaking about and to each other right now, Will we even make the ancestors that we're putting on such a high pedestal? Will we even make them proud? Alafia Funya.